All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about dividing a decimal by a decimal, something that looks like this, only this time, uh, in this video, I'm gonna explain something a little bit more, uh, you know, like, okay, so we often, we know that the rule is uh, swoopy, swoopy, and because we don't know how to divide by a decimal, and so we swoopy, swoopy, and whatever we do to the outside, we have to do the inside. So in this video, I'm really gonna focus on how do we, as teachers or as parents, explain that to the students in a way that makes sense. So let's get started on this. And before we actually divide this 5.76 divided by 0 0.4, uh, let's talk about this. So first off, let's remind ourselves, what does division mean? Well, there's one definition of division that means take 5.76 and divide it into equal groups. Now, if this was a point, I mean, if this was just a plain old four, man, that would be easy. 5.76 cut into four equal parts. What is the size of each part? Okay, so that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is when we think of this as, well, when we get 0 0.4, how do we take 5.76 and then cut it into 0.4 equal parts. That doesn't make sense. That's less than one part. How do we take 5.76 and divide it up into less than one part? So that doesn't make sense. So here's how we're gonna make sense of this whole process. All right, so imagine I've got three into 12. All right super easy. Of course, we know that 3 into 12 gives us 4. All right, nothing rocks, you know, rocking our brain there. All right, but here's what's kind of cool. If I just, I don't know, arbitrarily decide to multiply both of those problems or both of those numbers by 2, I'm going to get a totally different problem. I'm going to get 6 into 24, which means we're going to get and here's the shocker, we're gonna end up getting the exact same answer. So even though the problem itself totally changed from three into 12 into six into 24, the answer itself stays the same. In fact, it turns out we can multiply both of those numbers by anything we want. We and we'll still get the exact same answer. For example, we know that three into 12 is four, and if we wanna multiply both of these guys by 10, let's say, yes, we're gonna get a brand new problem. We're gonna get 30 into 120, but surprisingly, kind of blows my mind here, we get the exact same answer. It's four, 30 goes into 20, 120, four times, 30, 60, 90, 120, there's our four. So uh, we can mu use multiplication to change the original problem into a new problem, but we're doing it knowing that we're still going to get the same answer. There's the key. So when we finally get to really looking at 5.76 divided by 0 0.4, Cutting something into 0.4 equal groups doesn't make sense. But we've learned that we can multiply both of these numbers by 10, and that's going to give us 4 into 57.6. Ah, now dividing 57.6 into 4 equal groups, that makes sense. Now we can actually divide. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to do the standard algorithm. I'll put in the video description a whole bunch of links to other videos showing a variety of division algorithms, how you can use concrete and pictorial representations to do division. But here I'm just going to just kind of divide away using the standard algorithm. Love it or hate it, we're gonna do that. And so five go, uh, four goes into one, sorry, four goes into five one time. That's four 
and that gives me one left over. I'm going to drop the 7. That's 17. So 4 goes into 17. 4 times, that's a total of 16. I subtract, I get one left over. I drop that 6. I've got 16, so 4 goes into 16. Uh, what? 4 times, and that's 16 with nothing left over. And so that decimal goes straight up. So our answer is 14.4. The point, folks, is to recognize that dividing by a decimal means we're trying to cut something, in this case 5.76, into a non-integer number of parts. And that doesn't make sense. So we're going to multiply both numbers by something, in this case 10, to make the problem make sense. We can cut 57.6 into four equal groups. And we know that each group ends up being 14.4. How do we know we're allowed to multiply like this and still get the exact same answer even though we've changed the problem? It's because we did it on some smaller examples and we see that when you take a nice small example, change, change the problem in a carefully constructed way, you end up with the exact same answer. And folks, that wraps up this video on how do you divide a decimal by a decimal, but using a rule and explaining it in a way that makes sense.